I'm going to bed. It's um, Tuesday night, and I just realized I didn't videotape at all today. <clears throat> but I wanted to report that I um, did get chemo today. Jim is setting his alarm. Um, I did get chemo today, and it went fine. Whoa! I need to put water in Millie's dish. Um, still a little Benadryl-y. <laughs> I think I'm getting a little bit used to it. I used to come home and just like immediately crash, and now I seem to be able to power through that. <sighs> anyway, two more to go. Can't believe it. Come on. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Just two. Just two more to go. Wow. Oh, God. That feels good. <laughs> Thanks for seeing me through so much of this. Yeah. I don't know how I would have done it without you. We're a team. We're a team? <laughs> At first I thought you said routine. No. I said we're a team. Yeah. All right. Good night. So the needle went in on the first try, as it has been, you know, usually, um, lately. And um, now I only have two more to go. And uh, I'm switched... Since I did Chemo Tuesday this week, I'm going to do Chemo Tuesday next week and the week after, hopefully, or maybe even Wednesday and the last week. Um, but still, things are basically on track. That's the story. So it's the day after Chemo. It's now, because I had Chemo on Tuesday this week, it's now Wednesday. And I really do feel that steroid boost. And, uh, you know, I, I went to the gym this morning and I swam about 2,500 yards. And then, and then, this is not the typical of me at all, I then put on running clothes and went upstairs and ran a couple miles on a treadmill. Come on, girl. It's been raining here for the last several days. I haven't, I haven't even wanted to look at the garden. I'm hoping everything's okay. There's a lot of, of things... Um, in pots that uh, I just haven't made it into the soil yet. I'm just hoping they're not drowned. <clears throat> this is my third day in a row that I've driven to Hartford. Um, the first day was Monday for chemo that didn't pan out. Tuesday for chemo again and it did pan out. And today I came to accompany a friend to a doctor's appointment. And this is a friend who's um, had a mysterious, pretty debil debilitating ear illness for the past two years, and she's been hospitalized for. This is someone who runs five miles a day, is a longtime vegetarian, very healthy, and every part of her life a healthy person. Um, and suddenly she couldn't walk up the stairs. Um, she was having chest pains and muscle pains, and couldn't get a full deep breath, and and they couldn't find anything wrong with her. And um, it seemed to improve somewhat, but um, uh, a little gradually, gradually over the course of the two year years, it's gotten slightly better, and now it's getting slightly worse again. And so she's kind of embarking again into the world of, of, of doctors and tests, and which can be very discouraging if you're not getting any good news. Good morning. It is Thursday. Let's see, two days after chemo, two days? I had chemo on Tuesday, so that would make it Thursday. Um, uh, I am on my way to an appointment with, I guess, physical therapist, rehab services. The, one of the big risks with all the surgery, with the surgery I've had, and now with radiation on top of that, is lymphedema, and I've talked about it before. And if you've been down the breast cancer road, you know all about it. You know, there's a lot of things. Little things can blow up into lymphedema, which is literally your arm blowing up with fluid, and it's painful and it's very un unsightly. <laughs> I've seen it's very alarming to look at. You just it's an arm all the way down to your hands, just puffy, puffy, twice as big. And, and it's a condition that they can never cure. 
So once you got it, you got it for life, and you're basically trying to manage it for the rest of your life. And you go, so you want to prevent it. So my doctor wants me to have this believes that physical therapy um, throughout my treatment uh, radiation will help to keep that from happening. So I just got out of my appointment with the rehab place about the lymphedema, I don't know, rehab, physical therapist. It's kind of intense, like, you know, the, the radiation oncologist told me that there's a 20% risk that I'll get lymphedema after radiation because of radiation. And she said 26%, and then she goes, 26 to 34%. Is like she had me try on this compression sleeve. You put the sleeve on your arm, it's like kind of tight. Um, and uh, ever since I put that on, my arm feels a little achy. Like, I feel like it did me harm, and it's, that's that's uncomfortable feeling. Maybe it's just that all this talk about lymphedema, you know, made me paranoid or something, and now I'm. sucks. But you know what? It's like there's all these little pieces to this breast cancer journey that I've had to kind of acclimate to. And at one point, you know, I was feeling a lot of emotion around losing my breast and having numbness in my chest area. And, and now, like, so what? I'm numb. Whatever. I can't feel anything, like, on the skin um, where I used to have a breast big deal I can live with that so maybe there comes a point where I think so fine whatever I can deal with this lymphedema thing I don't know right now it feels right now it feels like a little bit of a blow and it feels scary uh, oh that's a beautiful tomato gorgeous. I like that what do you like I said I like that tomato plant oh. It's a nice one. What is this one? This one's called Big Dwarf. Big Dwarf? Yep. So that means the tomatoes are small, but they... The plant is... The plant is big? Kind of big. I mean, um, maybe it's the other way around. The tomatoes are big and the plant is small. All right. That's, that's my understanding, but I could be wrong. <laughs> so the reason... I'm going to say this for... Is it still recording? Yep. The reason that I'm planting it in a pot instead of in the soil is that there's some kind of sto soil fungus here that I, my tomato plants grow and then when they start to produce fruit around that time they just start dying. This is the camera woman from when we were in the garden, my mother. <laughs> she wouldn't do this, but you're supposed to stick it out in front of you. You can see yourself. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, so we were about to we were about to look at artwork that I'm trying to remember where it is. Oh. This one's not finished. Haven't touched it in weeks. I was trying to hold out until I had this one done and then I was gonna get all three framed. Mm -hmm. And then the other two are this one, and it's ready to go. There's this one. It's hard to really see it, but anyway. So I have these big paintings, and the place that I like to frame stuff, I mail it to them. So ideally I'd have all three done, and if I was to have these framed in time for that show, I'd have to just do it now. I'd have to just mail them off and get them framed now, and then I'd be lucky if I had them in time. I would probably get them in time. But is it two? How many do they have you submit? Two. 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 Oh, Can't well then. Three. Well, what do you think? Do you think these are worthy of that show? Yes. Do you think I'd win? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know what the problem is? They're just not traditional enough. They don't usually. What do you got? You know. Yeah, I got some attention for the other ones. But... Honorable mention last year. Yeah. 
And, it, and they were very different, mm -hmm. and they chose a very traditional piece, you know, Yeah, they tend to do that. Yep. Same oh, judges this saying. year, and interestingly enough. Oh, really? So maybe this time they'll feel obligated to give me something. They might. <laughs> They've seen your work now. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> so, my mom was actually a great help in the garden. I got a lot done. This ra It's been raining all week, and uh, it finally stopped for a few hours. So I planted um, a bunch of basil and put some mulch around it and um, a couple of tomatoes and then I did all these tomatoes in pots. So there's three of them. There's one there and there's one back there next to the rhubarb. She, she took some rhubarb home, which is good actually. I've got way too much of it. And then there's one more tomato plant, but it's out in the front yard. It's, a, it's actually the nicest one. And so and here's my dog. And she... The, maybe the best thing she did <laughs> being here was uh, keep Millie occupied because when I'm in the garden she just she really wants all my attention came outside to show you two things one is the plant my mom just gave me and I put in the ground this pink one pretty I don't even remember what it's called and I've already thrown away I've already thrown away the um, label and here's my other tomato plant in a pot. I put it right in the front yard. Because I think that it'll get a decent amount of sun right there. And I'm hopeful that the deer will leave it alone. Oh man, we have a big crop of grass. That's my stepson's job. Mowing. And it's still too wet to mow. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? Hi, Millie. Ha, ha, ha.